Good day, brothers and sisters. Now, with the Georgia Guidestones going down, it's kind of funny. Look at the events that are happening around that. And what did I say? I have been saying that we are in a transfer of power, that these certain people that hate God so much and hate you and hate me, which are these leaders, these, these elitists, okay, these elitists, you're going to want to watch this. Now, there was a prediction I made when the huge election sham happened. Just to let you know, every election is rigged like that. It's just they are not hiding anymore. And that was the whole point of all this stuff because they're not hiding. Remember, they're trying to build an antichrist. There's this whole Obama thing connected to it. But both sides are connected to it. So you have the Republicans and the Democrats who are both in on it. Now, what happens when a transfer of power happens, and in order to make my a prediction that I made almost three years ago was for them to make this Antichrist thing, because what they're trying to do is they're trying to replicate it. <clears throat> None of this shit's really happening. It's just all being forced upon you, just to let you know. Just like Trump brought all those people on January 6th, just like Trump brought all brought them out there, and then the Democrats, which ran the fight, were pretty much in control of the police and all that stuff. Trump brought them there while they trapped them in and then hurt them. It was a way to hurt the people. Both sides were involved. To me, Trump is their antichrist. Now, what happened to Christ, right? He died and he came back three years or three days later. He rose three days later. I have been, God told me that whenever these things are talking about days, in our time, we are talking about years. Trump was pretty much publicly executed, right? It was, uh, you know, they kicked him off of social media and all sorts of stuff, kind of like what they did to me. And then they ripped him out of the position. Now, Biden, in order for this to work, Biden would have to be impeached within three years. We're in the third year. He wouldn't be able to do his fourth year. He wouldn't be able to. Or the fourth year he would be getting impeached. But he would do his thing for three years, which he has, and he has destroyed not just the country, but the world. President Biden's double disappointment. Now, as the president's domestic policy begins to crater to the point where not only will Democrats not want to support him, they don't want to appear on stage with him, the latest being the White House communications director, Kate Benningfield, doesn't want to work with him anymore. Now, when talk about stage with him, those are two candidates in Ohio. Perhaps the most surprising to Biden supporters is how flat out he has fallen on the national stage, failing at fixing inflation while Americans have to choose whether to buy groceries or pay for gas to get to work or use credit cards to pay their bills. Domestically, it's been a disaster. But in trying to explain away his shortcomings, he inflates the power and influence of none other than Russian President Vladimir Putin in the economy and in everyday American life. we got a long way to go because of inflation, because of the, I call it, the Putin tax increase. Putin, because of gasoline and all that grain he's keeping from being able to get to the market. All right, his numbers will arguably never recover after the way he chose to leave the longest war in Afghanistan, why unconscionably leaving our own people behind. Then perhaps the most devastating revelation was exposed by Reuters this week, the decision to empty our strategic oil reserve to lessen gas prices. Since Joe Biden started releasing all this oil from our reserves, which he does not own, you do, we do, what has happened to gas prices? They haven't dropped. They've kept going up. Huh? How could this be? It really was a mystery. It turns out the oil being released isn't for us. Yeah, not only has he not brought down the price of gas using our own emergency fuel, he's making us less secure because we have less of it. And the nations benefiting most from it are the ones right behind me right now. They are China and India. 
China, the one nation doing more than anybody else to prop Russia up. And then there's India, who I think belong to have secondary sanctions because they are continuing to buy Russian oil, killing Ukrainians tangentially. Now, he's helping our enemy making us weaker and the Chinese company that is buying it is affiliated with Hunter Biden how do you do this and what about the idiotic obsession this administration has with restarting the Iranian deal as we beg Iran to re-enter the agreement with us asking the Russians to be our go-between currently this deal that the Biden administration is running headlong into trying to make has bipartisan opposition to it Iran's going to get a windfall of money like they did in 2015 the deal provides Iran with a pathway to nuclear weapons. In 2030, they can have as many nuclear weapons they want legitimately. We're on a pathway here, near-term dangerous, long-term very dangerous. I don't get it. He has all his experience in international affairs, and he's broken us internationally, and he's broken us here at home by breaking the border. We're close to 2 million people have entered this country illegally, and the White House care. The disappointment at home, socially and economically, are hard to digest, but we sure didn't expect him to be this disappointing on the international stage where he spent the bulk of his career. Now let's see what's happening. Those Boris Johnson well is his former advisor, Thomas Corbett Dillon. Thomas, thanks so much for joining us tonight. So what, to be first, the obvious question, what, why did Boris Johnson resign as prime minister? What's, I don't fully understand this. Is there a well, specific reason? It, it's, it's chaos, Tucker. It really is. Um, you know, the, the, the short of the story is that we elected Tucker, uh, we elected Boris to be the British Trump. You know, he was going to shake up the system. He was going to deliver Brexit. He was going to stick it to the elites. He was going to stick it to the elites. He was going to stick it to the elites. But he very quickly got sucked in by the sort of globalist agenda. You know, he spent a lot of time sucking up to Macron and Merkel that he forgot he's a conservative. You know, he, as you said, he went very hard on lockdown, very hard on vaccines. Um, he became woke, and then he, uh, you know, fully signed up to this uh, Greta Thunberg idea of the world is ending, which is not what the conservative people voted for. You know, Boris was elected by a, a very large group of working class voters that it was the first time they'd ever voted for a conservative politician. And these people want simple things, more jobs, lower tax, tough on crime, tough on the border, and tough on our enemies. But he got sucked into this globalist agenda that just wasn't what the people wanted. So eventually the, uh, the MPs started listening to the people on the ground and realized that this was not the leader for them anymore. He so humiliated himself, and without offense to you, your country, I think... Um, that you almost feel like there was something else going on here. Do you, uh, why would he have been sucked into the most conventional, dumb kind of lifestyle liberalism when he's obviously a very smart guy? Yeah, he, he, he sort of, you know, fell in with that elite crowd and he was, you know, traveling the world. He did a lot of time trying to save Ukraine and all of these things. Uh, what seems to happen is the government just lost their way. They didn't know what they were trying to do. Um, they didn't know what the policies were. They, they, they tried to, you know, do this global Britain thing. But, the, you know, we have huge issues in the UK, as, as America has too, and very similar yes. things with, um, you know, fuel crisis and inflation and all these things. That, that is what the people want. And, and that's not what he was delivering anymore um so it's a shame because he had a lot of potential we were very excited when he uh you know he had everything he even had the hair like trump but it, it just didn't come through in the end so sad the whole thing see what i mean so this guy promised the people that he was going to go against the elite and expose them and end them but what did he do no he didn't he didn't do nothing and now the people see it and they got rid of him. What do you think is about to happen around the rest of the world, brothers and sisters? Time for change. I told you the world, when the world ends, it'd be nothing but peace. That's when you worry. Nothing but evil.